Hello folks, today I'm going to be doing some homebrew wine, partially made from the benefits and the reaps and rewards of my garden. Um, I've got some windfall apples from the apple tree behind my shed and I don't know if you can see from here growing on my shed I've got some hops. So I'm going to make two batches of wine, I've got two demijohns, I'm going to make apple and hops and I'm going to make kiwi fruit and hops. Now I didn't grow the kiwi fruit, they came from the supermarket. Um, but it should be interesting wines because the apple is a dry and bitter apple so that should be a very dry wine and the kiwi is very sweet so that should make a sweeter wine. But only time will tell. It's October and I'm making these now uh, hopefully so they're ready for Christmas and I'm making them as sparkling wines. So I've already picked and taken a batch of hops to Horsforth Brewery. I've still got some left. So what's the point in wasting them? So I'm trying to pick them as gently as I can without squeezing them because they've got oil within them and I don't want to squeeze the oil out of them. And it's the flowers of the hops that have got that distinct hoppiness to them, the smell and the flavour. So I'm going to take these inside to take the hops off. Because it's getting a bit chilly out here. So I've moved production into the kitchen to give my hands a chance to warm up because it's absolutely freezing out there today. A really cold, windy October day, and uh, one I'd rather be indoors to be honest. So this is what I've got in terms of hops, and I'm now going to weigh them and see what I've got. So the scales are zeroed. So I've ended up with 160 grams of hops and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill this jug up with water, cold water and let them stand just to get any bugs out that might be in there. So I'll just leave them like that for half an hour or so and then uh, we'll go to the next stage. I've got five litres of spring water. Um, I'm using spring water to make the wine because the tap water in Leeds unfortunately it's a bit chlorine and I've noticed in the past when I've made wine that it's given it a funny taste. So now I use uh, this instead. The key thing when you're making wine is to make sure that your equipment is all spotlessly clean. And this has been uh, cleaned with boiling water before I've used it. The other equipment will need sterilising. But because I'm boiling the water in this I don't need to sterilise this as well. So I'm going to add the hops the water you'll notice that they float like a pan of mushy peas so this is my second batch of hops this year I got 272 grams on the first occasion next year I should get more because my plants are only a year old so I'm turning the ring on Bang. and I'm just going to turn that down. Now what I want to happen is I want it to come to the boil and then simmer very very gently for a short amount of time and then I'm turning the heat off because these are this is going to stand for a few days so all the filter, uh, flavour filters out of the hops. As you can see the hops are now simmering and I'm going to just turn the heat off I'm just going to let them settle. So you can certainly smell the hops coming through. Now this is now turned off uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer half of the water from this one into this one and hopefully half of the hops. This one will get the kiwi, that one will get the apple. You can see the colour of the liquid there, it's taken on quite a brownness 
I reckon that's about about half each. I'm just gonna put some of the hops across. There we go, I think that's fairly even. So I'm just gonna prepare the kiwi fruit by removing the skin and chopping them up into small pieces. Okay, I've now got the kiwi and the hops in this one. So I'm just gonna put the lid back on. I'm gonna bring it back to the boil. And as soon as that starts to boil again, I'm gonna turn it off and then that's going to get left for a couple of days so the fruit breaks down and all the flavour comes out into the water. So now I've got to do the same with my apples. I'm going to remove the skin and any sort of bad brownish bits um, and then that's going to go into the other pan. So I'm just going to put the apple in as I cut it. Core and all, it's going to get filtered so it's no problem. And I'm just doing this because it's turning brown very quickly, this apple, as I'm cutting it. So the kiwi and hops is now boiling and it's time to turn it off. All you need to do is just let it come to the boil and then leave it. And then I shall do the same for the apple in a second. So the water or the liquid from the fruit uh, and the water together is what's called a, a must or a wart. And that's filtered and the solid stuff that comes out is traditionally called the pomace. That's all the stuff that doesn't go into the demijohn. And I've got my demijohns over here now. You can see that they're currently blue because they're sterilizing. And I'm marrying all this lot together with yeast and sugar in a couple of days time. So I'll be reporting back then folks. I'm just waiting for this to come to the boil, then I'm gonna turn it off. Two days have passed and it might not look the most appetizing, but trust me, what's been happening is all the juices and all the uh, flavours from the fruit have now been percolated into the water or filtering through into the water, whatever the technical word is. And all I'm doing now is warming each one up. I don't want it to boil. I just want it to warm through a little bit because I'm gonna be adding it into the demijohns, which are now cleaned and sterilised. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of yeast and the yeast will feed from the natural sugars within this and that's what creates alcohol. So they're now a little bit warmer than room temperature. I've turned the heat off and I'm gonna strain them into this jug. So this is the hops and kiwi. You can really smell the hops actually. It's got a really lemony citrusy flavor. Just show you that just there so I need to empty this now into the demijohn so I've just got to very gently and carefully which is often easier said than done pour this in now the color doesn't look appetizing and it's cloudy but it will all be sorted out in time so that's all of the pomace in the top I'm just draining the last of the liquid off that. I could squeeze it if I want to, but I don't want to get too much in the way of sediment in there. I can see from the colour of the water that there's plenty of flavour in there for the wine. There we go. So this is now just the water, the wort from the uh, strained fruit. And I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to this and the yeast once this has cooled a little bit. I don't want to kill the yeast with it being too hot. And uh, I'll do the same with the other one, which is going to have the apple and hops in it. So they're now both done. That's the apple one, the slightly lighter one. Well, apple and hops, that's the kiwi one, kiwi and hops. And now I just need to add a little bit of sugar. So 
I'm not particularly measuring this, I'm just adding a little bit. Each demijohn in the end will take probably the equivalent of a full bag of sugar. So the yeast I'm using for this is called Lalvin yeast for champagne, sparkling wine and cider. And this sachet contains five grams, which um, is enough for five of these. Each one of these is a gallon, eight pints. So each one will eventually get a gram, uh, each of this, but I'm just gonna begin by giving uh, a teaspoonful here for now and just seeing how it begins and how it goes. It's very much an experimental job, this. To add a little bit of yeast. Into each one, just to start it off. And this is what we've currently got. So that's the yeast sitting on top. And it will eventually sink. And what we will end up at the bottom with is a, a sediment. So the sediment currently is the bits from the fruit and the sugar. And that sediment will thicken to probably about there by the time it's finished. So what I will be doing over the next few days is adding more sugar and more water until it's full but I don't want to put too much in because otherwise sometimes the yeast will just go a little bit crazy and it'll all come flooding out and I want to avoid that if possible. So I've just put these two devices in the top these are called airlocks these have also been sterilized and each one's got some water inside it you can see just there and to there I'll probably put a little bit more water in um, but what happens with these is it prevents any air getting into them and any contamination getting into inside the wine because that's what we need to do is now to keep anything out of it. This will produce CO2 as the yeast eats the sugar. That's one of the byproducts, and that will come out. It will create greater pressure inside than outside and that will come out through the airlock and you'll get a distinct bloop, bloop, bloop sound as the thing pops away. And I need to obviously add more to these, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Just And then tomorrow I'll put some more water and more sugar in and then keep going with it until they're full. So it's early the next morning. And as you can see, the yeast has been doing some good work. It's already started to uh, eat the sugars, produce CO2 and hopefully some alcohol. So I've just added some fresh water to the pan. The pan's been sterilised and I'm now adding some sugar. And I'm going to add as much as the water will take before it becomes a saturated solution and won't dissolve anymore. You can see all the sugar's dissolved now, so I shall add a bit more. The water really feels thick and buoyant, a bit like the Dead Sea. I've got my demijohns in the sink now, as you can see. And I need to add the sugar water, which is in this pan. However, I don't add that straight into the demijohn because that would be too hot for the yeast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in the jug. And then to that, add some sugar water just to lower the temperature. So that one will go in here. And the yeast will absolutely love that. It will really start to take off now. So that's it for the time being. I've put the airlocks back on. I've put another half a teaspoonful of yeast into each. I won't be putting any more yeast in now. And I'll eventually top these up to about here. 
but I need to just make sure that the uh, fermentation isn't going to cause all this to come up through the airlock. So I'll just do it in stages now. So it's the waiting game. So just a two week update and both of the wines are bubbling away still. They haven't flooded over and they seem to be doing quite well. Well it's been seven weeks and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the wine out of the Demijohns, give it a little try and then I'm going to put it back into the Demijohns getting rid of some of the sediment at the bottom. So in order to get my wine out, I need to use a siphon. Cheers folks. I think that's nearly done actually. Really sweet. It's a lot stronger than I expected actually. So I'm going to siphon it to about that level and then get rid of the bits in the bottom. So what's in the bottom of the demijohn isn't any good. And unfortunately that has to go down the sink. So I'm just going to wash my demijohn out. The uh, plastic demijohn that the wine has gone into has been sterilised already so it's completely clean in there. But I want to clean this out before putting the wine back into it. I don't want it to stop fermenting quite just yet, so I'm going to add a bit of yeast nutrient. Oh, a teaspoon. The yeast nutrient will just kickstart the fermentation a little bit, because don't forget I'm trying to make sparkling wine, so I need it to have some fermentation still going. So I'm going to add the wine back into the original demijohn. Then I'm going to add just a little bit more sugar, just a little sprinkle. And finally I'm going to top it up with some spring water. So the airlock goes back in and hopefully we'll start to see this ferment again. So that's the kiwi and hops done. Now I've got to do the apple and hops. Cheers folks. Oh that's nice. That's really nice. Quite strong, extremely appley. The hops comes through as well with a bit of a kind of dry bitterness afterwards. Almost citrusy. That's really good. I actually prefer the apple and hops to the kiwi and hops, surprisingly. Mmm. So as with the apple and hops, I'm going to get rid of the sediment. I'm now going to wash out the damage on like I did previously. So as with the kiwi and hops, I'm going to add a bit of yeast nutrient again into the apple and hops. A teaspoonful. I'm going to add a sprinkling of sugar. And then I'm going to pour the wine back into the original damage on. Once again, I'm going to top up with spring water. I'll put the bung back in. Now I'm going to leave them for a week or two before deciding whether or not I'm going to try and clear them and bottle them. So it's a week later now and I'm going to attempt to clear the apple and hops wine. You can see it's still got some life in it. There's plenty of uh, fermentation activity. And I want that for when I bottle it for the fizz. So in order to clear my wine, I'm using this Clear It Wine and Beer Finings. I've never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. So it's a two-step process. So first of all, sterilized teaspoon handle. I need to start to agitate the wine and move it around with this handle. So there are two bottles 
of clearing solution. I'm going to start with bottle A and do half a teaspoon and add that into the demijohn. And then using my handle again, agitate. And that needs to thoroughly mix in. So what I'm going to do now is just put the bung back in. I've now got to wait another hour and then add solution B after another hour. Okay, one hour has passed, so it's now time to add half a teaspoonful of solution B. This is a lot more thicker and syrupy than solution A was. And then once again, give it a good stir around, mix it in well. And boom, back in. So this is meant to be fast acting finings to clear the wine. So we'll come and have a look at it tomorrow and see if it's made a difference. Well, it's a couple of weeks later and the apple and hops wine hasn't cleared any further. It's still got a very slow bit of fermentation taking place, but that's just fine. Uh, I'm resigned to the fact that this is going to be a cloudy wine, a bit like a, a scrumpy cider, which is quite often cloudy. Um, and that's fine. So I'm just going to bottle it as is. So I've got my uh, siphoning tube sterilised and clean. I've got my bottles sterilised and clean. I've got my wire cages and my caps. So it's time to get bottling. So before the bottling of the wine happens, I'm just going to put a little bit of sugar in each of the bottles. This is just going to give the fermentation a little bit more of a kickstart. It'll last a bit longer and it should mean, hopefully, that there's going to be some sparkle in the wine. There's probably the equivalent of about two thirds of a teaspoon of sugar going in each bottle. So bung out, siphon tube in, and I don't want that to go to the very bottom. That will do for now. And now the scary bit. It wasn't that scary, really. So I will have enough for five bottles. And then there'll probably be a little sample in the jug just there. Again, I've just got to make sure that that doesn't go to the very bottom because I don't want to put pick up any more sediment than necessary. So the speed of the liquid through the pipe slows down the lower this gets because the height of the liquid there and here becomes lesser. So the pressure decreases. This is a lesson I remember from physics GCSE in about 1986. And then this is going to stop any second now. We'll get the bubbles in the pipe. There we go. And that is the siphoning over. So if I just let that pipe drain into the bottle. That's exactly five bottles. And what's left in the bottom of the demijohn is really a mixture of sediment and the uh, finings that have sank to the bottom. And that's just basically throw away. So if you look at the bottles, particularly the uh, lighter green one on the left, you'll see that there is bubbles rising. This is definitely going to be a sparkling wine. So at least it's not cleared, but it's definitely going to be a sparkler, and that's a good thing. So I've got my plastic uh, corks there. I'm just going to put them in some hot water, and there's a reason I'm doing this. They're very difficult to push into the bottle, as they are, but if you get them hot, then they go a bit more malleable, and they push into the bottle much easier. Okay, I'll just pour some of that hot water off. There's my corks, or my stoppers, or my bungs, whatever we call them, because they're not made of cork. And it should just push in. I should use two hands, really, in case the bottle slips, but I'm filming with the other. 
fact, I'm going to have to use two hands. Uh, that's one in. And two. With these stoppers cold, this is nigh on impossible. It's a right mission, but when you get them hot, they go in lovely. Downside is they can sometimes be a little bit hard to get out again. But because they're plastic, they're reusable. So I've got my corks in and now I need to get the wire cages on. Otherwise, in about five minutes time, these are going to start exploding off. So with the wire cages, it's just a case of put it over the top, get it centred, pull the wire down and twist and twist and twist. And that is going to hold the cork in place on the bottle. So again, get it centred over the cork, pull the wire down so it's over the lip of the bottle and twist and twist and twist and twist and twist. And this is genuinely there to stop these corks flying off. It's not there for fancy. It actually serves a real purpose. And these are all from bottles of uh, sparkling wine, champagne, Prosecco, whatever we've had that we've just kept. So we obviously let the corks fly because you can't reuse the uh, corks because they've got like a shuttlecock shape. But um, you can reuse the cages. And people actually save these and sell them on eBay, believe it or not. So there's my bottles all done and that should be fairly good to drink, I think. I haven't actually tasted it because I didn't have enough. But notice that the bottles are all dimpled and that will mean that the pressure that builds up inside there will hopefully not lead to any explosive accidents. Okay, so just like with the apple and hops, I'm now going to attempt to clear the kiwi and hops. This has been fermenting for a lot longer than the apple and hops, um, another two weeks, because there's just so much more life in it. But I need to end it now, otherwise I think it might start to taste too strong. So it's time to uh, begin the process of getting it into the other demijohn. So I want to drain most of this out, probably to about there, and then I'm going to add finings into it so it mixes in and hopefully will clear it a little. Although I'm not holding my breath because the apple and hops didn't clear, and I suspect that this won't either. And I think that's down to boiling the fruit, you know, and I've done that in the past, I have sometimes struggled to clear it. So again, just like with the apple and hops, I'm using the same finings and I'm just going to add a little bit into there. Maybe a little bit more actually. And I want it all to mix nicely. And there we go, the unmistakable bubbles. And there's not a lot of sediment left, as I'd already cleared it a bit. So that's actually really good. So I need to leave this for an hour. So I'll put the uh, I'll put the bung back in. And then after an hour, I then add the finings B. Okay, an hour has passed. So it's time to remove the cork and I'm going to pour, I don't need to use the siphon tube now, into this demijohn and add some of Finings B from the pack. So I've poured about a third in there. I'm now going to add some drops of the Finings and then I'm going to add the rest on top. Now I've done it this way because I want it to really mix together. And I've not needed to use the siphoning tube this time because the sediment's gone. So I used the siphoning tube the first time to get rid of the sediment. But now there's no sediment there. It's just a case of getting it all to mix together. And hopefully the findings will grab the bits of uh, you know material within the wine and drag it to the bottom. Although I suspect it probably won't, but we'll see what happens. I'm just going to try a little bit actually just to see what it's like. 
very very good quite strong drier than the apple and hops it's just got a really good flavor a very fruity flavor and you get that you know your nose almost stings it smells so fresh good wine very good wine so i've got the bung back in and i'll come back to this uh, in a few days time and then it will be time to bottle it okay folks it's two weeks later i haven't bottled the wine yet because i could see that the findings were working it's just been a very slow job and as you can see compared to the apple and hops the kiwi and hops is a lot clearer so anyway it's now time to bottle and to that end i've got my bottles cleaned and sterilized so in order to kick start the fermentation process i'm just going to put a teaspoonful of sugar in each bottle this will reawaken the yeast and it just means that i'll get a bit of sparkle in the wine hopefully fingers crossed so i've got the sugar in the bottle i've removed the airlock from the top of the demijohn i've got my pipe in so now it's time to suck here goes fruity so i've got my first one filled up i'm just on the second i'm hopeful that i'll be able to get over five bottles from this definitely a little bit of action there that's good a very good sign for a sparkling wine anyway i need two hands to do this job so i'll come back to you when i've finished it so i'm just boiling a kettle now because i need to soften these plastic stoppers that are going in the top in fact that's hot enough now, if you don't do this they're impossible to get in they need to be made malleable and they're a bit stiff Right, let's give them a try while well, they're hot. One. Two. Three. Four. And finally, number five. I shan't be putting one in number six because it's not a full bottle so that's going to be tonight's try now i need to start adding wire cages because otherwise we're going to start seeing corks are popping so all the wire cages are recycled from bottles of prosecco champagne carver all that sort of stuff even leffe that we've had these plastic tops i bought from amazon and they're reusable so I don't let them fly when I open the bottles. So the wire cages are on and I can assure you they're not for decorative purposes. Trust me, you don't want these popping off willy-nilly, otherwise they end up with holes in the ceiling. So lids on, labels on, and now I'm going to put these away for two or three weeks just to mature and hopefully we'll get another fermentation and some fizz. So fingers crossed. Evening from the kitchen folks, just having an update on the apple and hops wine. Well it's time for the unbottling, let's see what it's like. So I don't know whether the wine is going to be sparkling or not, let's wait and see. I'm hoping it will be, um, if it is it is, wonderful, if it's not, never mind it's still wine. That was a good sound, look at that. It's definitely a sparkler. Oh wow. That is making me feel very happy with my achievement. Anyway, the proof is in the tasting. So, cheers. That is really nice. Absolutely delicious. It's so appley, so sweet as well. 
it's got a really really fruity flavour. The hops don't come through as much, it tastes like a really high quality scrumpy actually. Somewhere in between kind of like a, a fizzy, a really good fizzy cider and um, and some sort of like sparkling wine prosecco, it's somewhere in between but but quite sweet. Really unexpectedly good to be quite honest. Definitely Moorish. Anyway, cheers, I'm happy about this. Good evening again from the kitchen, folks. Well, after yesterday's successful unbottling of the apple and hops wine, tonight it's the turn of the kiwi and hops wine. Let's see how it did. So here's the wine in the bottle. So as with yesterday, I need to undo the cage, which holds the stopper in place. Will it be fizzy? That's the question. I have this feeling that this one might not be, but let's see. I won't count my chickens. Well, there it goes. Wasn't much of a pop. I don't know if it'll be fizzy or not. And in fact, it's not fizzy. At least I don't think it is. There might be a very slight sparkle, actually. Let's just have a look at that. Anyway, the real proof is in the tasting, so here we go. Oh, blimey, you can smell the hops. Actually, that's really quite good again. Now, it's got the most mild, mild of sparkles, but it's definitely not completely still. You get a really slight kind of bubbling on your tongue with it. It's got an overpowering smell of hops. The apple and hops one was all apple. This one smells of hops really strongly, but tastes of kiwi. With a hoppy finish. It's a real strange one, actually. It's a bit like, um, can you imagine crossing a sparkling wine with an IPA? It's somewhere like that. It's actually quite a good flavour again as well. So, and this one's a lot clearer than the apple one was yesterday. So in terms of appearance, this one is definitely the best. In terms of flavour, I think I preferred the apple one, but this is not bad either. I mean, I'm quite happy with this one. Um, but in terms of overall winner, I think the apple has to be the overall winner because of the fact that it was a really good sparkle. Like I said, there's a very mild sparkle with this, but it is mild, but it is there. You definitely do get a little bit of kind of like effervescence on your tongue with it. Anyway, cheers, folks. This has been a good experiment in homebrew. I've never uh, brewed with hops before. Uh, I'm going to brew with hops again in future and try different recipes. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to wait a few months now before they're ready again. But anyway, cheers. I hope you've enjoyed the film. I hope you've learned something about brewing or whatever and good health to you all cheers folks the film that you've just watched is a moss home and garden production you can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk i'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my youtube channel and for watching my films it really is very much appreciated if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden 
and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.